Welcome to my review of the XYTronic or Zytronic, however you want to pronounce that, LF2900 temperature controlled soldering station. So this is a Taiwanese made product. Zytronic has been around for a long time, but they're also cheaper than you know competitors like Heiko or Ursa or Weller or whatever. So yeah, I needed a replacement for my cheap. Chinese soldering station so this is what I went with and now I'm also going to review it so as you can see it comes in this box it has the brass wool on its stand and this is the soldering iron itself it, you can replace the tips it uses the Zytronics B series tips so anything that's from Zytronic that have the B as its first letter should fit this soldering station I will get to the review part of this video in a few minutes, but before I do so, I will tear down this soldering station and take a look inside, because that's what I like to do whenever I receive an equipment of this uh, type. And before I do that as well, I want to list the specs of this soldering station as well. So, this is a st soldering station by Zytronics, as I mentioned, it's made in Taiwan. It is a 100 watt soldering station, so it is very powerful. And as you can see it on the front, it has a touch screen. So, uh, and that in my opinion is not ideal. I'd rather have some physical buttons, but yeah, just, I guess they thought this looked modern and honestly, it didn't turn out to be as big of a hindrance as I thought it would be. And there is one physical button on the bottom right corner, as you can see, and that's for switching between profiles. I don't know why that's a physical button rather than something that they put on the screen but you know, it is what it is. When I saw the pictures initially I thought that was the power button and I was glad because I hate reaching around to the backside of the soldering stations but no that's just a profile button and again the power switch is in the back. So now that the specs and the physical tour is done let's tear this down and then after that do some tests. Even before tearing this down it was obvious that this was a very high quality because it weighs a ton. I don't have a scale so I'm not going to be able to measure it but I'm going to bet that it's higher than 2 kilos or about 5 pounds if you're American. So yeah that's because of the transformer inside. So let's just remove the screws on the top and as you can see this is the construction inside all the wires are neatly organized and crimped and there is no exposed mains wiring which is very good this is what i expect in a quality product also you know you can notice that the, the beefy transformer inside so let's just take a closer look as well it really is ginormous i'm pretty sure that's overkill for what it is i haven't checked the specs of that transformer specifically but it looks too beefy for this purpose so that's a good sign also you can notice this ST triac right mounted right outside of the case so the, I mean the enclosure so it is very well thermally managed and that thing won't overheat for sure and here are the controller boards as you can see there is a three layer construction going on the board the first board is for the screen and the second board, well it has some basic logic stuff and the third board is mainly for the wiring. But I also noticed upon closer inspection that there are a lot of unpopulated slots on a lot of these boards. And one of the unpopulated slots is marked pumped, Pump V4. So I'm assuming this is also used for, either used for or will be used for, for a vacuum desoldering station but I haven't seen any product from them, so I'm assuming that will come out later. So other than that, another thing that I noticed, which was also obvious from the feel of, it, of the button as well, is that the button here is actually a proper tactile button, rather than a r cheap rubber dome style that's usually used with pretty much every soldering station out there. I don't know why, why they went to the trouble of doing this, but it's a nice touch so I'm not going to complain about it. So before we move on to the review part, I just also wanted to mention that they include a spare fuse with this soldering station. So that's also a nice touch so in case you ever need to replace your fuse, 
you don't need to run around trying to find the exact size and spec spews out there. You can just use the spare one. So that's a nice touch as well. There is another thing, one last thing that I wanted to mention before we get to the performance of this soldering station. And that is, you can hear a slight hum when you turn on the soldering station. And if you have sensitive ears like I do, that can drive you cream insane. But the good thing is, I also have a fume extractor that's pretty loud. And when I turn that on, I can't hear the hum. But if you don't have a fume extractor or anything noisy in the environment that you are going to use this in, and you are sensitive to hum that comes from transformers, you should be aware of that. So I wanted to mention it and I'll just shut up for a second so you can hear how it sounds and then we'll move on to the testing. So the first test that I'm planning to do is to test it in a wet sponge to see how it reacts to any term big thermal changes. So right now I'm just preparing a sponge and I thought this looked cool so I just include, decided to include it in the video. But before I show that and I also show the rest of the testing, I wanted to mention that I'm not really an expert when it comes to soldering. If you've seen any of other any of my other videos, you already know that, but in case you didn't, I just wanted to mention that. And I'm terrible at soldering, so I can't really do any SMD work, so I'm not going to test that either. But the first test that I'm going to do, as I said, is just a wet sponge test to see how it reacts to thermal changes. And then I'm going to desolder some parts from the old soldering station to salvage some of the parts from it and throw away the rest. So I've set the soldering station to 350 degrees Celsius. So let's just quickly test that. You can see the small symbol blinking right next to the big temperature display. And that is the heater light. And it's shaped like a LED, bright LED. That's the shape it's at. And it constantly blinks when it's heating, just like a normal LED on a more standard soldering station does. So this should give you an idea whenever the temperature drops. So when the temperature drops, that thing blinks and blinks faster and more constantly. But one thing that I've noticed while using this is the temperature display, the real-time temperature display doesn't really drop. And a good test of that, which I don't have a footage of that unfortunately, is to increase the temperature to something like 400 and then drop it to 200. And you'll notice that it will slowly drop to about 250-ish and then immediately say just 200 and round it all up. So it's not really the most accurate display it's, and they, they have done that on purpose. But it doesn't matter too much anyway because this isn't a, the type of soldering station that has the thermocouple or thermistor or whatever they use right inside the tip. This is this has it near the ceramic heating element, so no matter what, because of the air gap between the tip and the heater, it's not going to measure accurately anyway, so it's not a big deal. But I thought it's worth mentioning anyway. Another demonstration that I'm going to do with the soldering station is just dismantle my old piece of shit soldering station and salvage some parts from it. Uh, using the soldering station to desolder some of the parts. So yeah, I'll just do that. I'll let, I'll let the music run in the background because I don't really have much to commentate over that. And then you can see the performance of the soldering station for yourself. But again, keep in mind that I'm terrible at this, so your results will be much better than mine. And also keep in mind that the soldering solder used in this product is a lead free solder meaning it has a higher melting temperature so that's the reason that it takes a while for the solder to melt so just don't think that's the problem of the soldering station it works exceptionally well and it from my experience which I never owned one but I've used some 
cheaper versions of say Heiko or Ers not Ers Weller soldering stations. This works as good if not better than those because of its higher uh, higher wattage so higher power. But obviously the more expensive JBC irons for example will work better than this but you know that's apples to oranges this is about 100 ish dollars at least the price that I bought it at I don't know how much it costs in America and uh, like a JBC iron the cheapest one is 500 dollars so that's not a good comparison so anyway as I said I'm just going to let uh, time lapse music run and salvage some parts and then come back to you once that is done Here are the parts that I managed to salvage from the old soldering station. It's basically a transformer, a 100k pot, some connectors, LEDs, and a 16mm connector. So, overall, this took me about 10 minutes, but I must again repeat myself. But I should say that I'm terrible at soldering, and you can see that from the sped up time lapse footage. For example, I left it a pad while removing the connector for the iron, so yeah, that's basically my fault, but you hopefully you could tell from that sped up footage that the iron itself works just fine, it's just that me being an untalented whatever. So yeah, I'll just quickly conclude, I'm very happy with the soldering station, I like its high power. I like the options in terms of the tips they sell and they also work very well. I haven't demonstrated any of them but I have five different tips in total and they all work just fine for their intended purpose. And the 100 watts is really good because it eats up very quickly. The problem is that it doesn't really cool down that quickly, like it drops like a two degrees uh, ten, every 10 seconds or whatever it's very slow when it comes to cooling down but that's not a big issue obviously you can just put it in a ground plane or a wet sponge or something like that and then it will obviously cool down and other than that one complaint could be that the screen doesn't really show you the correct temperature as I mentioned earlier it just says whatever you said it at and just basically lies to you well, as I explained, it's not a big deal, but still, I would have preferred if they just straight up told the, whatever the thermocouple or thermistor, whatever measures. And another issue would I was thinking it would be another issue is the touch screen, and because I usually prefer physical buttons, even if even if they are rubber dome rather than a tactile button, I still usually prefer those, but. In the end, um, I think the screen works just fine, as long as you don't accidentally touch the hot iron into the screen, it shouldn't be an issue. And one last quick nitpick is that the power switch is in the back side, so turning the soldering station on and off isn't the easiest thing. I would have preferred to have the power button where the profile button is, and just put a profile button on the touch screen somewhere. So I don't know why they didn't do that, 
maybe there is some regulation that they have to abide but I don't think that's the case so I don't know anyway uh, overall I'm very happy with the soldering station and I highly recommend it it's very good for its price and I'll try to find some li links for the US and the Europe and put them in the description below but other than that I hope you enjoyed this review and found it useful if you did please give me a like below and thanks for watching